I'm New Age Server Alarm, and you're watching Alert Tech Security. Today I'm going to do a demonstration of my Radionics 9000 series alarm system. This will be the first of a few videos on this system. This one is going to be on the fire portion. This is my Radionics D1256 fire keypad. I'm sure just about all of you have seen these in buildings before, mostly big box retail stores. They're pretty simple to operate. For the pull station on this system, I have a Radionics D461. For a smoke detector, I have a Radionics D265 on a D280 base. Now, first of all, the base is not yellowed. The HUD and the base are actually slightly different colors, so they don't match. But it's the best I was able to find. Now, many of you will probably recognize this as the Simplex 2098-9201, and you're correct, because Radionics actually rebranded that detector as well, but it is essentially the same smoke detector. For a signal, I have a Gentex SHG. Now, typically with a Radionics system, you would see a Radionics rebranded Wheelock signal, such as an MT or an AS. You honestly don't see SHGs very often. This is a first generation SHG. It is the rarer later model with an ADA compliant strobe, but it still has the original horn. So here is the inside of my panel. So the blue cable here is actually the telephone line, it's just an ethernet patch cord I'm using temporarily. Here is the main CPU for the panel, the D7412G. And we got our 8 zones here on the bottom, which is expandable up to 75. And we have several modules inside the panel. The first module is this one right here, a D125. I have one of these inside my home system as well. Basically what this does is this provides two wire smoke zones. It'll provide two of them per module. It actually allows you to choose whatever zones you want to convert. So I have zones 7 and 6 connected to it. Next I have a D182C supervised bell circuit module. The supervised bell circuit module allows you to convert any unsupervised output into a supervised output. So I have this being used to drive the horn strobe. Because this is a 12 volt system though, I have an external power supply that is providing 24 volt power to this module in order to run the horn strobe at the correct voltage. Underneath the uh, control panel I actually have this little switch box here. This is something you would really only see in a demonstration system, but this basically allows me to cut off the burglary siren or the horn on the SHG if I want to do a quieter test. This last module here on the right side of the panel is a D8210B. This is an access control module used with access control readers and locks and that'll be appearing in a later video. Alright, so now that I've given the tour of the system, let's go ahead and test it. Then reset the pulse station. So as you can see, the keypad is now displaying alarm silenced. And the keypad will scroll through whatever events are currently in its memory. So the interesting thing about radionics is, unlike a typical fire alarm system, as soon as a point becomes reset, it's active again. So this means if I were to activate the pulse station again, it goes right back into alarm. Typically on a fire panel, it won't do that until it's reset. So whenever you see alarm silenced on one of these enunciators, the system is not locked in alarm. It can still go back into alarm. Pretty much at this point, it's just got stuff in its memory, and to make the system normal again, we just press enunciator reset. And now we are back to normal. So now we'll go ahead and test that smoke detector. I have some smoke in a can here, and We'll just spray a little bit. This is going to go off pretty quick though because this smoke detector is actually quite sensitive. Silence that again. 
Now there's one extra step that has to be done when you're resetting one of these. Smoke detectors, of course, do lock into alarm. So it's stuck in alarm. So press detector reset. As you can see, our smoke detector has cleared. So as you can see, the smoke detector went right back into alarm because there's still some smoke in the chamber, so I'm going to need to blow it out. But, if you forget to push detector reset, and you just reset the panel, like this, it goes into trouble. So the reason why it's in trouble is because you've just reset the system while the smoke detector is still in alarm. So, as you can see, we've got one fault, smoke detector. If you just walked up to one of these systems and you don't know what's going on, why it's in trouble, you can check the point status. Pressing escape brings up the keypad menu, and it basically asks you, you want an alarm silence, you want a trouble silence, you want to reset the sensors? Reset the enunciator, view the memory, view point status. So now we have three points on area two, and we can scroll to find the point we want. This one supervises the NAT card, I'll explain that later. So go to the smoke detector, press enter. It is showing that it is shorted, which means that the zone is still in alarm. So, back out of the menu. Now we can do detector reset, and that'll fix our trouble. So now the system is back to normal. So, as you saw earlier, the keypad has a menu on it. There are a whole lot of menu functions you can put into these keypads, and you can enable or disable them based on what you want the user to be able to do. And I've taken out all the ones that pertain to burglary, like bypass or change user codes, because there's no keypad on here to change codes. And pretty much everything here is related to fire alarm. Let's do fire test, and we'll demonstrate walk test. Walk test is... Walk test is pretty simple on these panels, and it does actually help you a little bit with the way it's designed. So as you just heard, it did a quick blast of the knack as soon as you start walk test, and now it's showing three points to test. So let's start with the smoke detector. And as you can see, the panel automatically does a sensor reset because that is a smoke detector zone. So next we can do the pulse station. But you'll notice the panel does not actually do a sensor reset for this one because the pulse station is not programmed as a resettable zone. So now we can say, okay, how are we doing here? What do we have left to do? You press next. You see now we say one point left to test. Oh, we missed something. So push next. It says view untested. Press enter. And we see this one here, fire alarm knack fault. And that's actually something in the panel that needs to be tested. So on the supervised bell circuit card, all we have to do is just flip the switch and that'll trigger it for the walk test. So as you can see, this time you didn't hear the horn strobe, because flipping the switch down disables the horn strobe. And we'll reset that. So now, we can see zero points left to test, everything's been tested, and then we can just go back out to normal after that. That's pretty much it for the Radionics 9000 series fire system. They're fairly simple, but they're also a little bit complicated at the same time. And they are difficult to get, but I think it's pretty neat to finally be able to show how one of these works to the alarm community in some good detail. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day, and please like, comment, and subscribe.